What's going on, B Stars community? It's your boy, Attorney Cal here. We have a very, very exciting day today. Um, I know that you all, I see the comments saying that tax season is approaching um, and we are approaching that deadline. So um, by request and through conversations with our community director, um, I was in search of someone who I felt like could relate and speak the language uh, of our community and uh, kind of make sure that we understand what we need to do as it pertains to taxes, maybe give us some best practices, give y'all his contact information. Um, and I, I see that you see their jokes already going. So, uh, but I don't, see, further, I don't see their jokes. Where are they, where are they going? <laughs> <laughs> but without further ado, I want to introduce you all to a CPA. His name is uh, Victor Delamere. He has his own setup. So today we're going to be, you know, going through with him. Um, and Jeanette, if you could, could you uh, pull up our PowerPoint? And then Victor, in the meantime, could you kind of, you know, just introduce yourself to everybody? Um, and yeah, you know, take it away. Absolutely. Thank you so much for allowing me to uh, talk to you guys today. I'm actually very excited and uh, looking forward to help the community. Uh, you know, when it comes about financial literacy, uh, I believe it's one of the most important aspects of, you know, everybody that's trying to make something happen in the future. Um, as it relates to accounting and taxes, which is my, you know, my specialization, I, I believe that organizing your personal finances and organizing the business uh, finances are critical for you to grow, right? And then as part of like your growth process, making sure that you're saving taxes is highly important because then you can take the money that you're saving and invest it back into the business so you can keep on growing, right? So to tell you more about myself, um, so I'm here in Atlanta. Uh, I'm very close to the uh, Buckhead community. I've been in business for over 10 years. Uh, I've, been in a, I've been a CPA for close to 15 years now, 15, 16 years now. Um, and I'm native from Puerto Rico, so I speak English and Spanish. Spanish is my mother language. Uh, I'm, I'm very passionate about business, guys. Uh, I love uh, helping my friends and clients to grow their businesses and save money on their taxes. Uh, and I'm here to help and, you know, answer any questions that I may be able to answer and provide you guys value so you can keep creating and keep doing positive things that are going to have a, a positive impact in your future. So thanks again. I really appreciate that. So, you know, my, my thing is, and you probably have already seen, but, you know, we have a lot of people on the, in the community doing a lot of different things, people selling beats, distributing their beats, um, trying to think of publishing, all of these different things, right? So I guess my first question to you and community chime in if y'all have specific questions that y'all would like to ask, but like, could you just kind of explain, you know, so we're all just starting out on a level playing field, like what is taxes? Um, why are taxes important? And like from just from like a producer standpoint, right? Like what, how do you think that will look? You know what I mean? So I don't know if you could elaborate that, but I, I just really want to make sure that everyone is on like an even playing field, you know, as sure. a producer, like taxes and everything. Sure. So, so taxes is the way that the government raises uh, revenue, right? That's the way the government, uh, one of the primary ways the government, uh, you know, makes basically money, if you will, is through taxation, right? Uh, and there's different levels of taxation. There could be taxation on your income, taxation on your business income, taxation on your payroll income. Um, inflation is another way of taxation, but that's a whole different conversation. Um, so there's different ways that the government raise, you know, you know, raises raises income revenue, and one of those ways is through taxes. If you are a producer, you are a creator, right? You are an independent person, right? You are making your own business, you are making your own money, right? So the basically the way taxes work for creators and producers. Uh, is to basically the government takes a percentage of your profits as a way of taxation, right? Um, and you as a creator or a producer or a business owner, pretty much it is your responsibility to, to file your taxes every year and in a form of a tax return, right? So the tax return shows, you know, your, your main information, your name, your business name, your address, 
you know, your basic information. And then on your tax return, you will show the amount of income that you are having for a specific year. So for example, deadline uh, for this tax season is this Friday, April 15th, right? So on that tax return that's due on Friday is for the tax year of 2021, which is last year, right? In that tax return, you're gonna show your income and then the expenses associated to your business or to your to your creation, right? And then whatever the net amount is, the net income, the net revenue, it's 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 gonna be the basis for the taxation for that specific year. Does that make sense? That makes perfect sense. And when you when you're thinking about when you're thinking about all of those things throughout the year, right? Because you know now that you're explaining. You know, okay, we know that we have our our taxes that really relate to the previous year. What are what are the key things that you think, you know, that our producers could take away with? Um, what things could they do throughout the year? So the number, sure that sure. they're, the, they're, you know. Yeah, so many different things. But the most important thing is that they want to have a conversation. They want to have a relationship with a professional CPA that can guide them. That's the main thing, right? Everybody has their specialty, right? For example, my specialty is accounting tax and business consulting, right? Uh, so when it becomes up to creators and producers, they producers or creators typically know how to create and make sounds and make images and make music and make like awesome things that excite and entertain people, right? So. Uh, the main thing is for, for the creators is to have a conversation with a professional CPA, okay? Number two is making sure that the their personal finances are organized, right? Like you have a specific business account or a specific bank account for all the business activity. If you're going to have a credit card, you're going to have a credit card for business activity. You don't want to have necessarily a credit card or a, or a checking account that's going to mix your personal stuff and your and your business stuff. Another aspect is that you want to make sure that you are creating an LLC, right? A limited liability company, right? And you conduct business through your LLC, not through your personal name, right? Making sure that you have your bank accounts with your LLC, making sure you have your tax ID. That way you can report your taxes with the business name, the LLC, and then the tax ID that you just obtained, right? So then again, it's making sure that you have the right conversation with a professional, making sure that your personal finances and your business finances are, you know, uh, that are organized, and as well as your documentation is organized as well. And at least I would say that you want to make sure that you're organizing your personal and your business finances, I would say on a monthly basis on a monthly basis because that way you create the routine that okay by the fifth of each month you're going to take a look at the activity for the prior month does that make sense and then when it comes tax tax time you are not waiting on last minute to get your taxes done does that make sense makes perfect sense so yeah chat definitely if y'all have questions um ask and please share this i think this is probably you're our first guest ever on protect your heart so this is definitely probably one of the most, if not the most important conversation that we've had because this is just a topic that always comes up. So now we understand what taxes are. We kind of understand, you know, how to make sure that we're um, keeping track of our taxes, like you said, on a monthly basis. So now, you know, I'm at a stage, say, for example, I'm a producer and I've already got my LLC set up. Um, and now I'm at a stage where I have that entity and I'm keeping everything separate. What type of things do I need to do at that point to go and notify? Um, and how do I go about notifying, you know, the IRS? Like, hey, you know, this I set up this entity, right? What things do I need to do to notify them? Like, okay, this entity has its specific tax thing. And then also, I know you talked about having a separate bank account. How do I go from you know, being able to notify the IRS to also tell them my bank, like, this is this is something simple. Sure. So let's start with the bank, okay? Uh, for me, banking, uh, for business owners, for creators, for any, anybody banking, the relationship that you have with your bank is, is, is very important. Why? Because, like, if you really think about it, cash flow is the oxygen of the business, right? 
And like, historically, we learned that banks are this or banks are that. And, and the way that business owners and creators want to see their, the bank is as their tool, as their partner. Okay. So like you're tracking your cash flow, like you're tracking your activity to like your bank statements, right? Through your online banking. You get on your phone, right? And you get like, okay, these are these are this is the money that's coming in. Like you get in your phone and you see the activity. Okay, this is the expenses that are going out. Oh shoot, I see that I have too many expenses going on. So let me make let's make sure that 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 I'm pushing for me to have more income so I have better cash flow. And the guardian of this cash flow is your bank. Does that make sense? And then, like, as you dominate that, as you dominate your cash flow and you're making sure that your taxes are in order and you're maximizing your profits, then the bank sees that, oh, wow, this creator, this business owner, this creator knows what they're doing. You know what? Let me give them, let me, let me, let me have them apply for that credit card. Let me have them apply for a line of credit. Right. And then these are tools that will enable you to like buy more equipment for you to hire more people, for you to expand your business. Right. Like, so, but everything starts by you having been organized and thinking two, three steps ahead. Like, you want to know, okay, this is what I'm doing this month. This is what I'm doing this quarter. This is what I'm going to be doing next year. This is what I'm going to do. It. I'm going to, I'm going to be doing a few years from now. Right. And then you execute your plan. Now, so, Going back to your question, okay, so like, how do I inform the IRS what I what is it that I'm doing? Okay, yeah, it's very simple. You'll be filing a tax return every year, right? And then in that business tax return or personal tax return, you're gonna have your information. You're gonna have your LLC information or your business information. And then on, on that tax form, you're gonna be reporting all the income, all the expenses activity, and then you're gonna be reporting your net income, right? And then remember, guys, that by having the right relationship with your professional advisor, let's say it's a CPA, an enrolled agent, a tax preparer, like what have you, right? You also want to make sure that you're talking to the people that will be, that have the experience and they have the credentials, right? For, for you to get the best value that you have. So sometimes you have to make an investment on that. But remember that if you invest in what's valuable, you're going to have an edge in your personal finances and then also in your business finances, right? So then going back to the tax tax form, you're going to be reporting your income. You're going to be reporting your expenses, right? And there's other basic information that you're going to be presenting, you know, in this tax form. And then if you have a big profit in your business, then you want to make sure that you're talking to your CPA or tax professional and having a conversation like, hey, what can I do for me to reduce your taxes legally? What can I do? What are... What are the method, methods of accounting that I can utilize? Should I be on the accrual basis of accounting? Should I be on the cash basis of accounting? At the end of the year, can I buy more equipment? Can I accelerate or prepay some expenses for me to lower your ta my taxes? You know, and so forth. So that's that's in a nutshell how you're going to be reporting your information to the IRS, which becomes in a form of a tax return. Got you, got you. So we got a quick question here. Uh, what's a CPA job? I know you kind of explained that. And what does it even, what does it stand for? And also too, I think you can kind of clarify the difference between a CPA and like maybe a financial advisor or someone that specializes in both. Sure. Yeah. So a CPA stands for a cert certified public accountant. That means that a, a CPA, you know, graduated with a degree in accounting and passed a uh, various exams that are very hard, uh, very hard tests, very hard exams. And then with that, you t you have a license from the state for you to provide uh, certified public accounting services to organizations, right? And a CPA has, you know, a level of understanding that you can definitely benefit from. And that comes in the form of accounting, right? Like accounting is the language of the business, right? Like if you understand your business, like for example, a creator, you know, a, a big creator, a producer, expert on like, you know, uh, making tracks, expert on like creating sounds, experts on like doing voiceovers or tags or so forth, right? It, they understand the metrics, the language, the 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 frequency and so forth of, of, of like the sounds, right? 
the same thing happens in accounting. Accounting explains the story of a business, right? It explains like a movie. It's like the credits. You take a profit and loss statement or a balance sheet, and it tells you the credits of the picture. You remember when you're watching Star Wars, right? And you have like the credits or movie, you see the credits. It, it, that's how the movie happened because of those credits, like be, because of these people. Same deal in accounting. You have your profit and loss statements, you have your balance sheet, right? Which is like accounting reports. And it tells you the story of a business for a, a specific period of time, typically a year. Gotcha, gotcha, makes sense. And I guess my next question now is, so we understand, right? Cause I'm trying to walk them through, right? We understand, okay. Got my business set up. I understand I need to be tracking everything. I understand what taxes are. Um, and I understand, you know, having that CPA will really help me. So now that I understand that, how what happens, right? And I know, you know, in the music industry, we have seen a lot of different situations. And I think for most artists, like right, or producers, it just seems like when it's not something like a criminal issue or something, you know, that happens. It's always it's like, man, you know, the tax person, you know, this person got me, right? Or they didn't pay my taxes or they didn't do this or they didn't do that. Uh, so I want to kind of talk about first what happens if you don't pay your taxes. But then I also want to dive into maybe some best practices or just not even recommendations, but things to be, you know, looking out for. Like I was watching um, a thing with Steve Harvey. And he was talking about how he ended up paying $22 million in taxes, but he didn't get the credit. He lost the money. And what he was saying was he had a financial advisor, right? And he would be sending in the checks for him to pay his taxes um, to the financial advisor. But what would, be, what would happen is they would basically take that exact amount out of his bank account, right? But he wouldn't, he wouldn't recognize that that exact amount was not just a check being cash. So he thought he was paying taxes, but he really wasn't. So I guess like if we could talk about like what happens when you don't pay those taxes and maybe what are some things that, I, that the community could do to make sure that um, if they are retaining the CPA, what are some checks and balances that they can put in place to make sure that when they actually start working with someone and sending their money and that their taxes are actually getting paid. Yeah. So I would start with education. Like, like you want to, when you're working, let's say you're working with a company like ours or you're, you're working with anybody, you, you want to understand that you want to know that when you are talking to a CPA or a professional, it doesn't matter if it's a financial advisor, CPA, enroll agent, what have you. Like, like you want them to work with you, but you want to understand, you want to comprehend what they are like, what they're doing with you. That's the first thing. Like, yes, you want to trust, but you want to verify, right? Like you trust and you verify, right? So you verify what you know, and then you marry it with what the professional is doing for you. Like, just do not go and say, take care of this because I don't want to deal with it. Then you are not being a responsible business person. You're not being a responsible CEO, right? Like you, wanna, you want to delegate? Yes, no problem. But also you want to verify, right? So like you want to make sure that when you're writing a check, to the IRS, you're writing a check to the IRS, like not to anybody else. Like you're gonna write a check to the US Treasury. You're writing a check to the Internal Revenue Service. Like if you're in California, you're writing a check to the California, California Board of Equalization. Like if you're in Georgia, you're gonna write a check to the Georgia Department of Revenue and so forth, not to anybody else, right? Like. I don't know the specifics of the case that you just mentioned to me, but like, you know, it, if you're making a payment to an institution or organization, you write a, you're going to write a payment to that institution, right? Like you want to make sure of that. Now, so 
going back to your question, so what are some of the areas? Like, how do you, how can you make sure like you can maximize your your taxes, right? So, okay, number one is you want to make sure, um, like, what are the deductions that you can qualify for? Okay, so if you're a producer, that means that you probably have a studio, right? You could have a studio at home, or you can have a studio somewhere else. Okay, so if you have a studio at home, okay, so that's a space that you have and potentially you could take a square footage of your studio against the total space of the house and allocate that to the expenses that you have on a monthly basis and allocate that to the business boom i'll start there right then you have like computer you know internet technology right software and so forth Okay, if you need to travel, you know that you have some travel expenses. If you have a car and you need to go to meetings, you know that car could be a deduction, right? Uh, you could also take a look at, you know, incentives and tax credits by hiring people, by being in the right, you know, by buying the right asset, get the, you know, depreciation on the asset that you're buying, right? So the main thing you want to do is you want to be like, you want to know what you're doing. Like you want to know in the business you're in, you want to know accounting, like you want to understand what is it that the professional is doing for you. Of course, you don't have the tools for you to execute the knowledge that will be executed by somebody else, but you want to know what they're doing. Makes perfect sense. And at the point at which, okay, you have the knowledge, you know what you're doing, but say, for example, for some reason, you know, the deadline's coming up you don't file your taxes or you know like I, I just don't have everything prepared for the year. Um, I think that may be a lot of people's situation where they don't even understand or realize that, you know, that's I, that's why I think this is really great because they may not even know like I'm making this or I'm doing this or I have this, but I need to be paying taxes on the money I'm making. So say, for example, you don't pay the taxes or you can't pay the taxes. Like, what is what advice would you give there in that situation of you know why what things you could do and also talk, maybe talk about um what happens if you just don't if you just say look i'm not paying i'm not gonna pay my taxes because yeah. i know that's that's also the mindset too a lot of times where it's just like they gotta come they're gonna have to do their job they're gonna have to come get it you know What's the, what what are the repercussions if you don't pay your taxes and also maybe talk about, you know, things you can do if you feel like you, you may not be able to pay it at that particular time? OK, for, so first of all, you want to know you want to know your responsibility. That's the first thing. Like you're responsible for your personal finances, you're responsible for your business and you're responsible for you to file tax return. Right. Like you're responsible for that. OK, now. I know then you understand what your responsibilities are, right? Like that's, you must do that. Okay. Then you want to make sure that you are informed about like tax deadlines, right? Like you want to know when are my taxes due? Okay. All right. So you're saying, Victor, but I'm, look, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to pay any taxes. Like I don't, that's not my game, right? Okay. I understand that. And I respect that because I, I get it. I, I totally get it. But then in order for you to like um, grow and evolve, you have to get over that mindset. You just have to, right? So think about real estate investors. You think real estate investors like to pay taxes? Probably not. Right. OK, so what do they do about it? Well, they identify what are the options that they have in order for them to mitigate taxes legally for them to lower their taxes. So what do they do? They buy even more real estate because they know that they can get a lot of depreciation. Depreciation is like a phantom expense that lowers the taxes. So the bigger they are, the more depreciation they have and the lower the taxes will be. So they're like, okay, forget about it. I'm just going to keep buying, right? So as a creator, as a producer, right? You're like, okay, I don't like to, let, let's see, you know, I don't want to pay taxes. I understand that. But what can I do about it in order for me to be responsible and comply with the law? Okay, what are my options? 
Take a look at the IRS code. The IRS code is basically a the Bible for business owners, if you really think about it. Why? Because it's got every single deduction, every single loophole that you can apply in your business. So then you don't have an excuse for you not to file taxes or pay your taxes. Remember, the, the, the matter, the fact is that you have to file taxes. But then if you're responsible and you are like creative and you hire the right people and you're employed, the, you employ the best like planning tools, then your taxes are going to be lower. So you can actually be responsible, but also be responsible, you know, with the with the government, but also you can be responsible with your own finances by leveraging every single tool available at your disposal. Does that make sense? Perfect sense. So, so at that point, and I see we have a question, so I'll I'll get that. Since he's from Puerto Rico, La Iso de Encanto, does he know if there are any tax benefits to living in PR as compared to the rest of the U.S.? I read that they have zero tax on capital gains, dividends, and interest. Could this be applied in any way to the revenue earned through music, or is it only for investments specifically? Muchas gracias. That's a very great question. Of course. Uh, so yes, the answer is yes. So a creator could be uh, domicile uh, in Puerto Rico, move to Puerto Rico, and do uh, the business out of Puerto Rico, uh, and could potentially benefit from like lower tax rates uh, on on their on their business, right? So there's different levels uh, of like tax exemption in Puerto Rico. We actually have clients in Puerto Rico. We have offices in Puerto Rico, and we have like managers and accountants in Puerto Rico, right? That's a good question. So, so you can be an investor and be in Puerto Rico, and you could be exempt from a lot of taxes. And you can also be a an entrepreneur, a business owner, and conduct business out of Puerto Rico, and qualify for you to have like very little taxation out of Puerto Rico. So that's a very good question. Makes perfect sense. So thanks for the question, Bufo. So now, now that we understand everything that we have to do, right, let's talk about the big thing that I've been seeing, right? There's there's this deadline coming up for everyone to pay. What, as far as going about next steps, right? Say, for example, someone hasn't done anything today. What would you recommend that they do in order to comply with the deadline? When is the deadline? What could they do to go ahead and, um, you know, try to make sure that they get that paid and what, um, you know, what strategies or what places would, would you advise them, um, yeah. you know, to go to get this stuff out? Yeah. So the first thing is they have to take action. Number one thing. Okay. Acknowledge that, oh, shoot, I have to do this. Okay. What are my options? Okay. Do I need to talk to a CPA? Do I need to talk to a tax preparer? Do I need to talk to an enroll agent? Do I need to talk to a financial advisor? Like automa like now you're thinking, okay, I have to do something, right? Okay, so you then wanna have a conversation with someone that knows about it, right? And the best way you can talk to someone about it is by you compiling your stuff, like all, your information for the prior year. You see why it's so important for you to keep your stuff at least on a monthly basis? Because now you're scrambling like for you to get everything ready in like what, day and a half, in two days. So what probably you wanna do is to file a, a tax extension, like an extension to file your taxes. That's gonna give you roughly about six months in order for you to like, you know, file a tax return with the Internal Revenue Service. Right. So you're going to file an extension and then you're going to be compiling all the information, organizing your records, your receipts, your bank statements, your credit card statements, and put together the movie with the credits, PL and balance sheets, which are which are the accounting reports. Right. And then with that, a tax return is going to be, you know, put together. And then you're going to have a conversation with your CPA saying, okay, what can we do in order for us to lower your the taxes if we can? At this stage of the game, right? So you want to take action. You want to make a phone call to your to to you know a professional. You want to shoot an email to to a professional. You want to talk to someone about it. You want to file an extension, and then you want to acknowledge that you have to organize your stuff, right? So that way, by next year, this thing doesn't happen, right? And it doesn't distract you from like what's important, 
which is for you to grow your business and for you to make money. Does that make sense? Perfect sense. And did you say, you said the deadline was April 15th? Yeah, April 15th is that deadline. Okay, makes perfect sense. So now at that point, what, I guess, you know, you have your own firm or um, you talked about y'all like having offices in different places. So talk a little bit about your firm, you know, talk a little bit about what you all do. Um, you know, maybe the type of clients that y'all have. And I think just kind of plug what you all do and maybe talk about, you know, for people that want to get more information, how they can get there and what yeah. services they can access, you know, now up until the deadline or even after. Let me, let me qualify something real quick. So historically, the tax deadline is on the 15th, right? Uh, when the deadline falls on a weekend, it gets extended for the most part. So the deadline will be Monday on the 18th. OK, so you still have a few more days for you to have everything together, file a proper extension. And maybe you, you know, your situation is is is, is the one that you can actually file a, a tax return by then. OK, uh, so sure. Let me let me let me tell you, you know, the kind of work we do. Right. Uh, so we love being business advisors. Right. We love being tax advisors. And we love to like consult with 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 our clients in understanding where our clients have been, where our clients are, and where our clients want to be. Like we want to be in the full spectrum. And the reason we want to know the full spectrum is because we want to know the story that our client is it's is creating, right? Because then we understand where our client it's intending to go. And then we put our skill set, we put our knowledge, our experience, right? Our resources uh, to work for our client. So we can maximize um, the chances and the opportunity for our clients to get to that point for that, you know, uh, summit, if you will, of that story that they're putting together, right? So yes, we work with producers, you know, you know, we work with uh, Grammy Award winners. We work for, you know, music producers. We work with movie producers. We work with actors. We work with beat creators, uh, uh, you know, with writers, right? Uh, with people that are in the equipment um, industry related to media, right? Um, we work with performers, right, that tour outside of the U.S. and also tour in the U.S. So there's like tax implications that are that have a global impact. Right. So and then then again, our expertise is understanding the accounting of their business, the business side of, of the business side of things so we can have the, the right tax strategy so we can find the right deduction so we can find the right tax credits. Right. And by doing so, uh, we add value to our clients. And then we make our clients journey to be more, you know, uh, in a way that's it's, it's less taxing, if you will. So we're we're putting money back into their pockets, back into their bank accounts so they can keep growing. Does that make sense? Perfect. Sir. Um, looks like we have another question. I think this is a really great question. When hiring a CPA, what's the most common way of payment? Meaning, is it about an hour? We want to get an estimate after review. We want to pay for everything first without getting into prices. Can you please talk about that? And that's a really, really good question. It is a very good question. So um, it all depends on the on the relationship you have with your with your CPA, right? Uh, I'll tell you how we work, right? So we work on a project per project basis, right? We don't have like an hourly rate. We typically have like a free consultation, right? Which is like a strategy session. Then there we get like, okay, what's been happening? What's going on now? And what are the areas in which we can add value? What are the areas in which we can help, right? And then based on that, we, you know, we, we put a proposal together, right? Based on the value, the work that we will be doing. Methods of payments, you know, is typically, uh, 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 you know, these days, you, you take payments in crypto, you take payments in, uh, you know, ACH, you take credit cards, right? You take checks. Uh, there's different ways for, for you know, payments to be to be processed these days, right? 
So um, then again, it, it all depends on on the on, on best practices for each firm. Um, as I as I share with you, you know, we work on a you know uh, case by case basis, and it's very personalized because every single situation, every single business, even though it may be the same industry, every person is different, right? So we just we just work with the person, and we understand how we can help the person. And then based on that, we put a proposal together and hopefully go to work. Does that make sense? Makes perfect sense. Also, too, another hot topic. Um, I, you mentioned it, but let's talk a little bit about crypto. Um, I think that's that's something that, um, you know, Bufo, you have another question here. Let's let's answer that and then we'll, we'll go into it. Are CPAs bound by jurisdiction like attorneys, meaning can they only practice in the state they're licensed in or how does that work? Right. So a licensed CPA can practice in any, any of the 50 states and territories. Right. Right. So a, a CPA that's based in Atlanta, like we are, we, we have clients in many different states. Right. California, Texas, New York, Florida, you know, Colorado, Ohio. Uh, we, have, we have clients in Michigan. Uh, we have clients in, you know, Alabama. We have clients, you know, in the Caribbean. We have clients outside of like the Americas. We have clients in Europe, we have clients in Australia, we have clients in Europe, you know, as I said, Argentina, Brazil, Colombia, you know, because our skill set allows us to like uh, help clients in their US taxes, right? So it doesn't matter where they are, they have to be responsible with filing taxes and doing some sort of reporting in the US. So that's where we come in and we add value. But to answer the question, yes. Yeah, so we CPAs can, you know, basically uh, serve clients in different states. They don't have to only serve serve clients in the state in which they're licensed. Perfect. Yeah. So let's let's uh, just skip back a little bit and talk a little bit about crypto, right? I think for me, just being an attorney, right? Some of the things that I do and look at. I was reading an article this morning, and it was talking about how crypto is going to be used to do deals, right? As a method of payment. We know there are a lot of countries like Russia that don't allow you to accept crypto as a method of payment, right? And you have, you know, NFTs, you have all of these different things. Um, the metaverse, right? a lot of people are, people are really, really interested in that. And we may have some producers that meet up in the studio and say, hey man, give me, you know, two beats for, you know, one Ethereum, you know? so. Could you talk a little bit about cryptocurrency as it pertains to the tax landscape? Um, maybe just talk a little about, bit about best practices when accepting crypto from a tax perspective um, to make sure that you're documenting these things. And also clarify a little bit for us how crypto is looked at. Because um, I know there is some discrepancy of, oh, is it a, is it a security? You know, is it a, a physical asset like property or real estate? So maybe if you could touch on that for our community, because I think crypto is one of those things that everyone, you know, kind of wants to know about. Yeah. So I am all about about crypto lately, right? So I love your question. I know I know you are too. So um, so for the IRS, crypto is is property, right? It's property. Uh, so it's taxed as a as an asset, short term or long term. The Securities and Exchange uh, Commission, the SEC, they they haven't, you know, they don't, they don't, they have not come out with a strong regulation for crypto as a security, as of yet. Uh, you know, uh, President Biden a couple of weeks ago uh, put out a mandate, pretty much on like where they see cryptocurrencies. Uh, in terms of like regulation going forward, right? Like they want to, they they are on a path for it to have more regulation, all right? Okay, so um, for creators, yes. So yeah, give me one bit, give me two bits. Here's one, here's one ether, right? Um, you know, creators right now are creating their own NFT, uh, and by creating their own NFT, they have like absolute control on like how their art or creation is going to be monetized right so for example here's what's going to happen if you like if you get paid if you get paid with like ethereum 
for you for one or two beat, uh, there's a couple of things that you need to do, right? First of all, you want to track the cost of your like work, right? And then you want to track like you you are swapping you are swapping your services for like a cryptocurrency, right? So, but there is an arbitrage of the value of the ether when you exchange it with the value of the services that you provided at a cost basis, right? So everybody accounts for, you know, their work on a different different basis, right? But the way the way it's going to be reported for taxes is not on the swap itself, right? Of the of the of the crypto asset and the service, but when the crypto asset or cryptocurrency is actually sold, right? Because there's gonna be there's gonna be an there's gonna be a price difference in between like, you know, let's say that you get you get paid, uh, you know, uh, one or two ethers, right? Okay, so then how do you get that? Okay, you have to have a wallet. Right? Then you're like, okay, is my wallet sitting in a in a, a exchange like Gemini or like you know um, Coinbase or or is my wallet on like MetaMask and I keep my wallet outside of an exchange. Okay, so I, if I keep my wallet outside of an exchange, then my whole thing is decentralized. Okay, that means that no one is going to report that for tax purposes. It's my or oh, your responsibility for you to report it. Why? Because your transactions are decentralized, right? So it's it's like different layers, guys, that you have to like basically understand when you're dealing with crypto. But it's known, it's known that like every government globally know that for the most part, crypto, it's like here to stay and it's just gonna keep on, on growing. So my recommendation for you is like to creators and so forth is like, okay, you wanna know you want to understand what you're creating and the value of what you're creating, but also you want to understand like NFTs, you want to understand crypto and so forth, because for sure it's going to have a you know a high impact on your economics and, and the work and the way you're gonna be conducting your business. Gotcha. Um I think your connection was going in, going in and out, but I heard I kind of captured the last little part part of that. We talked a little bit earlier about like property, right? And then you said it's like a cryptocurrency is a is an asset just like property. So I, I guess my next question would be, you know, when, when we're talking about how, and I, of course, I'm not a tax professional or I'm not, I don't claim to be, but I do know a couple of things. And I know one, one tool that that's used by people that own a lot of real estate is, I think it's called, a, a, is it a 1031, right? So basically... You sell a piece of property, right? And then you capture the value from that sale. And now you're able to roll that value into another property. And that the value there doesn't have to, you don't have to basically pay, pay taxes there. So let's say, for example, a producer was to get that, that value from that cryptocurrency and do something similar. Does that, does that also play a role in what you can do with crypto or is there a difference? Right. So you're talking about gain. Right. You're talking about the gain, so because values, the value is given by the market, uh, or by a buyer, or by a, an appraisal of real estate, right? So, so when you say value, I think you're mentioning you're locking the gain, right? And then you can roll it forward, right? Uh, so, yeah. So as it relates to like crypto, you can swap, you can swap, um, you can swap um, as crypto assets, cryptocurrencies, right? And you can use platforms like Sushi. You can utilize platforms like you know Uniswap, right? Uh, for you like uh, swap crypto, but it's not until you actually execute the sale of your cryptocurrency, your crypto asset, that you get actually fiat money for it. That is, it's a reportable event. Does that make sense? Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. So at that point when you actually execute that sale and then you get the money, that is going to basically dictate what your tax burden means. Mm -hmm. Either if you have a gain for which you will have, which either will be subject to a short term gain or a long term gain or a loss that you can carry forward uh, and offset future gains. 
Gotcha, gotcha. And when you talk about the, could you talk a little bit about the difference between short term and long term games? Uh, just, just the difference of okay, not to get too far from where we started, but the difference of uh, holding something for a certain amount of time. What is what is that that difference, right? Um, you know, how long does something have to be held to be a long term asset, and how long does it have to be held to be a short considered a short term asset? Yeah. So think about it this way: twelve months. Right, twelve months and one day is one year. So anything twelve months, twelve months a day, it's a long term, and the tax rate is twenty percent. Right, tax rate is twenty percent. If less than that, it's a short term gain, and that would be taxed at a ordinary rate. The ordinary rate could be anywhere from zero percent all the way up to thirty percent. Right, so it all depends on the tax bracket that you that you fall under. But long term is twelve months in a day. Short term is twelve months, less than twelve months. Most definitely, most definitely. Now, our community, I, I know you all are getting a lot of extracting a lot of value. Um, but I really appreciate you know this because I feel like we've been having so many conversations since we you know the marketing team started protect your art, and a lot of them kind of revolved around you know not necessarily taxes but finance. So to have that background and to be able to you know grasp that that knowledge i think is very very helpful um i don't know if anyone has any more questions for victor but i guess finally like how how you know the community go about reaching you um if they want to get their taxes done if they want to get more information um you know what's your what's your um, best way for them to contact you yeah everybody grab their phones right now uh and go to instagram and type victor delorme and everybody can start going to Instagram and type in Victor Delorme. And you can start following uh, me and you can start seeing uh, what we do. Uh, you can also go to YouTube and type in Victor Delorme CPA and you'll find us there. We're posting on YouTube and Instagram on a, at least on a weekly basis. And there's good stuff there, guys that I believe, honestly, that you will be benefiting from. It's good information, it's good nuggets. And for me, like education is like number one. That's one of the things that my parents like taught me to do, like go after education and constantly improving your, your craft and your work. And the best way you can do it is two ways. You can like, like get information by like reading and watching videos and good stuff. But then you have to practice it, right? So if you execute those two, you know you have good odds of you keep moving forward and growing your business. Perfect, perfect. Thank you so much for for that, everybody. Make sure you all go follow him. Um, when I tell you I was looking online, like man, I want to bring somebody on that I feel like the community will relate to. That's into making like dope content. Um, you know, and things that you want to see, like, in the morning, right? Because we all do the same thing. We get up in the morning. And maybe oh, we should, yeah. You know, but maybe we shouldn't. But it's like, you know, certain things scroll to, you know, to the top of your timeline. And it's like, that's something that I want to be hit with. So definitely, everybody, make sure you all follow him. Hit him, you know, ask him questions. And, you know, even if you're not sure what you want to do tax-wise, you know, I would just set up a consultation to just get more information. Um from him and you know i really appreciate you know yeah. you, you hanging out with us you know of course get on my instagram guys i i have a link uh for you to get a uh free uh consultation a 15 minute uh consultation strategy session so i have an application called calendly and in my instagram you go in there and you go in and you you have access to my personal calendar pretty much and like Go in, book put your information, your name, phone number, email, whatever, and it'll it'll go to your email. It'll come to my email, and we'll jump on a call, video call, phone call, and we'll we'll talk and see you know what are some of the questions you guys may have, and, and I'm able to answer and give you some value. Thank you, thank you, uh, Anjanette. Can we go to our next slide? We're about to close out. Um, just kind of want to just talk to you all a little bit. So there's been a little shift. The next the next time we talk is going to probably be about the, 
the global landscape of the music business. So we're going to talk a little bit about um, the numbers for the past year, right? Today we talked about how, you know, um, you know, your taxes and the numbers and your finances is the language of your business. And next week or well, next month, we're going to talk about how, um, you know, the, the language of the music industry. So what is the revenue from 2021? Uh, what sectors are doing really good? What beats, are, what beats, what sounds, uh, what regions are doing really good and what where things are trending towards. So I think that'll be really helpful. We can go to our next slide, our final slide. And again, as always, you know, um, I have um, office hours from 12 to 2, and that'll be, you know, every Friday. Just make sure you all DM me at Attorney Cow on Instagram. You can also hit me on Twitter at Attorney Cow. And, you know, again, I just really want to thank you, Victor, for doing this. And everybody, if y'all have questions, please feel free to reach out to us. We want to be a resource to you all. And we look forward to doing, you know, more things in the future for the community. So if, if we, uh, let's see, I think we might have one more question here. If you were to buy something for your business under another person's debit card, will you have trouble come tax time for your business write-offs? I think that's a really good question. Yeah. So let me read it one more time. Yeah. So there um, you want to make sure that the person that you're utilizing the debit card, which is their business bank account, is acknowledging that the purchase is for your business. And like you save a screenshot of that acknowledgement of, of that authorization. And with that, you can, you know, you can have it as, as an evidence that, you know, this is, this is, you know, this is how you support this purchase and, and that you can, you know, you can feel comfortable that you can utilize it for business and then as a write-off, but then you have to have the person's authorization, uh, that it's, that's belong to your business. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you for that clarification. I don't see any more questions. So, um, with that being said, we can go ahead and close out. Thanks again, Victor. Thanks, community. Uh, thanks, Anjanette, for moderating this for us. And, uh, you know, guys, we got a lot of great things to come. So with that being said, everyone have a great evening and peace.